Look, in fairness, I'm not exactly easy on my equipment. <coughs> you're, uh, no, you're not. Welcome back to MTV. It's time <laughs> for a video on Adventure Frontier. We have finally got around to it. So, let's just dive right in. So, the first thing you can do is just go straight into attacking an enemy. Beautiful. You don't need to do anything else first. You can just hit the ground running. That said, there is a wonderful in-game how-to guide. On the how-to guide. Now, as, as we mentioned, the how-to guide for Adventure Frontier is extremely robust. It covers a lot of really good stuff very comprehensively. There's not much we could add there. However, we will say, in an Adventure Frontier, you have levels and experience, as per most RPGs. Experience points will come from enemy attacks, PvP quests, uh, PvP jewels, quests, and exploration. Um, now, levels in Adventure Frontier are grouped into tiers, which determine what type of enemy you should fight to get XP. Note that you can select what type of enemy you fight. Yes. Yeah, well, the level groups will also determine what runes and essences you get for spell casting and what loot crates you get. How about you talk about combat? Because you're the combat <laughs> mistress, you're the combat wombat, and you've been beating the snot out of enemies. I think <clears throat> wombats are pretty damn dangerous, but... And you're currently very short and fuzzy. And you have a, a very hard ass. rock hard behind that can take a lot of punishment. <laughs> Combat Wombat. It's like combat and stats. First of all, let's go over your stats. Your basic stats, you've got strength, stamina, agi, armor, and intellect. These are boosted with gear that you can equip, as well as you get boosts as you go up levels. Then you've also got a couple of other stats, which are critical hit charts and critical hit damage. So, with the stats, um, the two big ones, the current meta of the game that you should prioritise is strength and agility. And Agi um, speeds up how often you can attack, and strength is obviously how much damage you can do with an attack. So, you're choosing, when you choose your gear, you're choosing between hitting harder or hitting more often. Now, something you haven't actually talked about is how combat functions. What actually happens when you use an attack command? Well, you <laughs> use an attack command and you will do a certain amount of HP damage to the enemy. So to an enemy that you've picked out of the list? Yes. So you will generally be always attacking your top level enemy. Because mm -hmm. uh, they're the only ones who will give you experience points. You will maybe occasionally change to a lower level enemy for questing. Because if you change enemies, yeah. your current enemy goes back to full health. The altar. Now this is something I don't know if other games have or not. It's a new mechanic for me. It's basically a booster. A permanent boost to your stats. For example, you can choose between plus 27 points of strength or a uh, 1% increase to your critical hit charts. Yes, you really. And your critical sneeze charts. <laughs> so, crates, gear, items. Um, in any RPG, items are really the thing that you're after because, let's be honest, as grown adults, we basically play RPGs to make Barbie dolls of our characters. <clears throat> Speak for yourself. <clears throat> Transmogs, Lord of Warcraft. <clears throat> Speak for yourself, not for everybody else. I will speak for 50% of the gaming community, thank you very much, and that's most of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, crates are your primary source of gear and items. They are linked to your current tier. The higher the tier, the better quality gear and runes you will get from crates. Crates are obtainable in a few ways. You get the crate cooldown where you can buy a crate. Crate drops in, gen in general chat which you're going to want to be participating in your chats. And as a reward for raiding. Raid drop is the best that you can get. Um, you get a crate from the tier above where you're currently standing. 
obviously that means you get better gear than you could otherwise be getting. Yes. And I actually polled the community a few weeks ago to see how people approach using your crate cooldown to bite crates. Yeah, so this is a bit of a meta thing. Yeah, this is a bit of a meta thing. And MT tips. Yeah. Well, you, violet tips. Violet tips. You could either continue buying crates at your max level, which obviously costs the most, or you can buy lower level crates, which are either like mainly the bottom two, a basic crate or a black market crate that will give you very basic items that are used as quest handings. Now I'm going to take over for a little bit so this side of the screen can just go <whistles> Quests are basic tasks that you need to complete to earn small rewards such as XP and Explorer kits. We have our first AHA! Explorer kits are an item that you are required to be able to do explore commands. Now, explore commands, as established before, are one of the ways to get XP, but you can't do them without this explorer kit. Quests will include tasks such as killing certain enemies, collecting items, exploring certain areas, winning jewels, and participating in raids. Some of these quests are not possible when you first start playing as they require you to defeat higher tier enemies and or explore higher tier areas. Now that you're back, you can take over because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, in raids we've covered, just manic. The one thing I will say about raids is it is manic. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've, I've Nathan, I, Nathan is trying, Nathan's the developer of Adventure Frontier, he's trying to come up with an idea of how to keep the sort of the slightly frenzied um, multiplayer really grouping, really attacking an enemy feel while making the visual side of it a bit easier because you just got to try and click a button as things are scrolling. So, trading. Something that we don't have in Epic RPG, at least not like this. No. No, so this is a little, this is a new mechanic for me. Um, player to player manual trading of items. So you're trading items that you get in your professions and you can't trade gear and you can't trade coins. How it works is you initiate a trade with someone using the trade command, which will then prompt you to load up your web browser and go into the game's dashboard, which mm -hmm. is something we haven't really touched on in this video. I think we'll do something, we'll go on to the dashboard in another video. So you, you can trade items that are made through professions, which makes professions a um, part of the economy. Yes. So, yeah, I like a lot of games where you have to choose between a gathering and a crafting profession. You can actually do both in the one profession. <laughs> so you do herbalism and potion making. And also mining and rune crafting. Spoiler alert! Version eight is bringing a new profession. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, and then I'm actually going to have to choose what profession I do. The only thing we didn't really cover there that I did want to ask you about is spellcasting. Yes. How does spellcasting actually function? Pretty simply, um, you run the cast command. Mm -hmm or you click the cast button, and then you get a list of what runes you have. Yeah. So you can't cast a spell without a rune. Um, but one of the things you can, with the trading, you can get runes from a higher level than you can get the maps for. Ooh. Which then allow me to basically just completely annihilate one shot <laughs> my current level enemies. So do you use a cast instead of fight or in addition to? In addition to. Cool. So you so can cast a, that as many times as you want, provided you have the rooms available. Right. So it costs, but yes. it's effective. Yes. Hmm. Sounds cost effective. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry. <laughs> that <laughs> was terrible. Down. It was terrible. Anyway, look, we've been recording for a while now and the kids are starting to lose the plot. Where are you actually up to, having played this game for two months? I mean, yep. it sounds like a lot of fun. It, it is. It, it's it a sounds lot of fun. like it's a lot of fun. Um, it after some pretty casual play, especially in the last two, two weeks, I've backed off on my play again, <laughs> just because my life. Yeah. Um, I am currently up to level 50. Current level cap is level 90, and it's going up to level 100 when version 8 is released. There is 
a lot of stuff coming. Like, I know Nathan is working really, really hard to put new mechanics in, fine-tune existing mechanics, make them more user-friendly, more intuitive. And I'm excited about the game and where it's going. Hey, hey. Sure. Cable baby, no. <sighs> Audio engineer. Um, I think that Wait. we should go before yeah. this particular audio engineer tries to dismantle the equipment any further. <sighs> My little DJ. <laughs> and this one's getting excited and chaos. Yes, and, you've, I've and you've got Oh, I've decided I'm calling them their, ca their chaos agents. Ooh, I like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they're our chaos agents. Yeah, well, that makes sense. They are the children of... <laughs> well, okay. On that terrifying note, I've been MT. I'm the Violet Bombshell. And we will see you on the next, whichever video. We yeah. we have a few. Okay. Bye. See ya. <laughs> oh. You scared the baby. I did. Oh, you bad, bad man. Ooh, I really scared the crap out of her. <laughs> it's okay, baby. Sorry.